Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 28th of September and it's day 61 on the allotment. <laughs> we are having beautiful um, long autumn days here at the moment. Um, they're really warm, it's the perfect weather to you know, sit outside and enjoy a beer. Um, but uh, we're here at the allotment, everything is starting to die back. Um, but there are some things I can show you. <laughs> so let's have a quick look around. Well, if I start with my big sunflower, um, this is the one that he was just too big, really, um, too heavy for the stem that he was on. He was also been blown about by the wind a bit. So we propped him up with some canes. And next year, of course, I will make sure that I prop up all of my sunflowers. But uh, to give you some idea of how big this fellow is, That is a good 18, possibly more inches. So uh, he certainly grew up to be a big fella, this one. <laughs> this is my other tall sunflower. He's the only one that's got some petals left. And uh, he's starting to droop down now. But uh, he's had a wonderful summer and I've really enjoyed him. Same with my other sunflower, starting to droop over a little bit. Um, I will be taking the seed heads of all of these, see if I get some sunflowers. What is amazing is that all three of these pumpkins now are almost ripe. The one over here on the right, the little one, that is ripe, as is the one in the middle. I think the big one over on the left still needs a little bit more time. So uh, I'm going to give him another few days, but uh, I'm going to be cropping these today and taking them back. They've got that really sort of orangey, pumpkiny glow about them. So I'm saying, I'm thinking to myself that that's nature telling me it's ready. All of the beans now are starting to die back. Whether they're runner beans, or whether they're French beans, which are really dying back, or whether they're Bellotti beans, which are also dying back. I'm really pleased with these Bellotti beans, actually. They've been absolutely gorgeous, and we've really enjoyed those more than any um, in all three of the... the the different ways to serve them up, you know, a little bit like runner beans, then um, like uh, new haricot beans, and then what we're doing now, which is drying them. So uh, definitely we'll be doing the tongue of fire bolotti beans again. Uh, won't be doing as many runner beans, but I'm having a think, and I think possibly what we might do is do one of the Greek varieties of runner beans as well that produce butter beans. And so uh, that's going to be uh, one of the focuses uh, next year is going to be on preserving the actual bean pods. This is my winter cabbage. And uh, some of it is, well, those of it that were under cloches is actually pushing those off. So I have to put the net up uh, today. So uh, the one that was netted is actually looking quite lovely and it uh, doesn't look to me as if he's getting nibbled too much, so long may that continue. My Brussels sprouts looking a little bit bigger each time. One in the corner there, I think something tried to get at him, which is a shame, um, but the other's not doing too bad. To be honest, I'll be happy with just a few sprouts on the table. So uh, looking forward to see if I can actually bring these through. They're very small at the moment, but the Indian summer, I hope, is going to do us a favour so that they can grow up in time for Christmas. And now my leeks, which as you can see, are getting a touch of rust. Now absolutely every allium I grew this year has got rust. So I need to look up what causes rust and therefore how I can try and prevent it next year. There are some of these leeks that I don't really think are ready to pull yet, but I don't want them to just to be destroyed of rust. So I'm going to pull the big ones. There's a couple over there that uh, are ready. So uh, they're good, but the others I'd quite like to leave them in. Um, if anybody knows what is the cause of rust, I would love to find out. And this is my now I think quite well established rhubarb. I haven't picked a thing off of this all year and I'm still not going to. Uh, as it dies back I'll obviously compost the leaves but uh, the main focus that I wanted on this fellow was that he got established and I think he's done that. 
Um, he is starting to die back now and uh, um, not be quite so impressive, but he definitely made his presence felt in this area of the plot. So uh, I'm looking forward to next year when hopefully I can pick some. What we have here are the bags that haven't been um, emptied yet of my potatoes. I have been uh, giving them uh, a little bit of rain to uh, um, keep them moist inside, but uh, of the ones that we've got, they've been absolutely delicious. The Anya have been perfect salad potatoes. The International Kidney, again, have just been absolutely amazing. Um, the little ones have been perfect salad potatoes. The big ones have been really good bakers. Um, we've uh, been making great mash with them. International Kidney, even though they are you know, a bit of a temperamental variety, do seem to be absolutely gorgeous. The eye opener, of course, was Golden Wonder. Now, even though they weren't very big, and there weren't very many of them, they've been absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm thinking that what I'll do next year is try Golden Wonder again, but it's a very late main crop variety, so I'll do a second main crop variety with it, and we're thinking about rooster potatoes. Well, the raspberries... They're still coming, actually. I had a few when I came over here. This is not a prolific raspberry bush. And if I was staying on this plot, I would dig this one up and I would plant new raspberries. And I'd plant a combination of primocanes and floricanes so that I had early raspberries and late raspberries and maybe even a third that was a, you know, a medium variety. But uh, I've enjoyed the ones that have been here. And it's certainly been good learning about raspberries. I say that wherever you go, you should leave a little of yourself behind. Well, these were strawberries that were growing in this container. And the runners are now rooted in the ground here. So uh, that's going to be a little bit of me that's going to be left for the next owner of this allotment. And uh, hopefully they will enjoy them as much as I did, because they were gorgeous. Well, this current still does have a few leaves. I'll give it some water. Um, it's not happy. It never was happy all through the year. It doesn't like the koya. Um, it didn't like not being in the ground. I tried pretty much everything I could to kill this without sort of being deliberate about it. So uh, maybe I can put it in the ground somewhere and it'll survive. We'll see. Inside the greenhouse now. I've actually taken a chance because with the Indian summer it has been very gentle with the wind and there is actually an improvement. I know it doesn't look at it but it looked really bad um, in these cucumber plants and the cucumbers that I've grown since then have actually been green. So ventilation with a greenhouse is definitely a key thing and this is something I've got to consider. Now short of you know, taking a chance as I did last year and watched everything get blown about, there's not a lot I can do about ventilation in this particular greenhouse setup. So uh, I'm going to have to think about this and how to add ventilation, um, possibly to the frame, without using the plastic tent over the top and get something else that would be a little bit stiffer, that um, can stand up to wind. So uh, I've got lots of things to think about here, but I did actually manage to grow some green cucumbers, which was brilliant. And now my chilli forest. This is one of this year's Scotch bonnets, and that's starting to get chilies. There's more of this year's lemon drops, and they are in flower. There are a few more of the scotch bonnets from this year that are starting to get a little bit of chilli. Um, this one here is one of last year's. Now this has actually got chilies coming. What I tried to do, I saw a video from uh, Clifton Chilli Club and they gave a tip about cutting back on the watering. Well on this one I overdid it a bit. So the idea was that they were saying it gets more capsicum into the chilies, but you know, obviously you don't pull back as much as I have on this one, which was a bit silly and I've nearly killed it. It's had some water now and hopefully it will recover. It's also getting chilies, which this will be the second or third lot of chilies I've taken off of these. So even though these are a very strange Scotch bonnet, they do seem to do the business. 
There's more chilies coming on this one, that's another one of this year's, and there's more chilies coming on the one on the end. So overall, this has been a very high producing set of chilli plants for me. It'll be interesting to see if next year's do the same thing. Down on the bottom row. I'm having to find homes for these because I'm going to be taking the greenhouse down very soon. And I can't find a home for all of them. My wife will kill me if I take all of these grown up chilli plants home. Uh, so I'm finding homes for them. Uh, amongst other plot holders and it seems to be working um, and I'm going to keep sort of 10 of this year's maybe five maybe six maybe 10 of this year's and try and overwinter those so that uh, hopefully we can get to uh, chilies early next year but there's certainly an awful lot of chili plant in here <laughs> One of the things that I started to think about was the lack of ventilation in the greenhouse and I wondered if that was why my chilies were not coming into flower and coming into fruit as quickly as I'd hoped. This is this year's. So what I, what I did is I took some of them home and I've been keeping them on the windowsill. And let's have a look at the ones at home. These are the chilies on the windowsill. If I come in... I mean, you can see that they're really green, they're really lush, and actually there's chilies on this one. Uh, you can see here, in the middle, there's chilies on this one. That's a scotch bonnet. This is a scotch bonnet, uh, actually no, sorry, this one is a lemon drop, and the one behind it is a lemon drop. Neither of them have got chilies, but they're looking really nice. Um, they all probably should be in uh, bigger pots, but if my plan is to overwinter them, I don't want them to get too big too soon and then for winter to take them. But there's also chilies on this one. These are scotch bonnets. Now the two, if you see through here, they were the runts of the litter. They were the last to sprout and they've grown very slowly, but they've grown very steadily and they're looking quite healthy. So I have hope for these. So I might be imagining this completely, but to me, the ones that are at home seem to be doing better than the ones in the greenhouse which doesn't really make sense except that they're getting a good sense of sun but they also have good ventilation and I think that's the difference so with the chilies next year I think I might keep them out of the greenhouse and keep them on the windowsill until such time as I have got good ventilated greenhouse to put them in. Well here he is. This one, uh, I'm going to call them the three bears. So this one's mama bear. So here she is and uh, well you know compared to me that's not bad. <laughs> and these are the first leeks that I've dug up and they're actually looking really good. Um, these are the ones that I put into pots, into the little plastic pots, and I jokingly refer to them as my prize leeks. And, well, they might not be prize, but they're certainly pretty respectable. I'm very happy with these. I'm going to clean them up now. And here is my harvest of leeks. I've, this is the first time I've tried to do that feathering of the leaves, and uh, I think I need to study that a little bit more. Um, but... I'm really pleased with the size of some of these. They're looking lovely. Well, the light's starting to go now. Um, this may be the last of uh, the, uh, the long evenings. Certainly this season has been fantastic. <laughs> it's nice to finish it with uh, a crop of leeks. And uh, there's still some in the ground that I'm hoping the rust is gonna stay away from. And so that uh, I will have uh, some more but uh, I can certainly see some leek and potato soup in my future. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye.